So, quick rundown. Morning, Leroy. Morning, Barry. Morning, Spinning. Spinning. Morning, Dunk. Uh, morning, Roy. Morning, Colin. Morning, Mike. <coughs> morning, Steve. Morning, IDR. Uh, uh, morning, 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 Peter, morning, Barry, morning, Fred, morning, all, morning, Royal. We're all in the house. Evening, Bob. Morning, all. Well, eventful morning. I've got two uh, Logitech stream cams. And two of the C920s, the Logitech stream cams have decided they don't want to work in any way, shape or form. Sorry, I'm looking down at the iPad because Karen's here with the iPad. Um, so, uh, let's see if we can get her onto there. Do that. Get that and now she don't seem to have a chat box. Live chat, live chat. Come along. We don't seem, oh, I'm in the wrong thing, that's why. Let me, uh, full of it this morning, full of it. Morning, Grump, morning, Michael, morning, Paul, morning, Martin, morning, James, Julian. Morning, everybody, anybody I've missed. Sorry, I'm messing around with this iPad. Because Karen doesn't do this sort of stuff at all. And I'm just trying to find out where we're going. Let's get there, let's try a goblet, let's try that. Let's get rid of that. Let's do that. Ah, now we've got her. So Karen's <coughs> got an iPad. So, oh, more than everybody. So we're going to do a goblet. Now, to a lot of you, that don't sound too bad at all because you do a lot of goblets. I think the last time I, morning Adrian, morning Kev, uh, the last morning, Rob. Morning, Steve. Morning, Philip. Morning, anybody I've missed. Uh, the last time I did a goblet was about six years ago. So I don't do goblets, and we're even going to have a go at a captive ring. And I have never, ever, ever, ever done a captive ring. Uh, so that'll be interesting, won't it? Uh, the piece we was doing last week is here you can see it's still in the chuck it's had a coat of lacquer a day or two coats of lacquer a day uh, and it's now drying out and i shall give it a a buff a polish and part it off so i said everybody will see that when it's done um but that's the secret of finishing if you're going to finish something properly it's not a instant spray the lacquer on get it off the lathe job done it takes a bit of time so that has been a process all week every sort of morning or something and sometimes in the evening i come in spin the lathe up give it a couple of coats of lacquer uh turn the lathe off let it dry um he said uh morning michael michael look Big pile of blanks for you. Um, so it takes a bit of time if you want to do it properly. So we have got a piece of ash that way. I think it's about 16 inches long. You can see it's been well cut. It's an old off cut. I've chopped out. There was a piff 
just there. Chop the pith out. So hopefully should be fairly stable. We'll find out in a bit. Um, so that's what we're going to have a go at. So let's come to the old overhead camera. And we're just going to get this on the lathe. I'll clear the debris off the lathe. My lacquer's still on the extension bed. There. Let's get rid of that. Clear the decks. Safety glasses. Just found them. They're over here. I've been messing around with these cameras for about oh, half an hour this morning. Drives you nuts. So, we're just going to find centre quickly. About there to do us, I think. Yeah, that don't look too sad. And then on to this one. About there, that'll do. <coughs> Slide this up here. I need my glasses. Can't see a thing. Oh, glasses on. Still can't see a thing. Where's that mark gone? Oh, I've got it. It's just there. <coughs> so trap that between centres. This doesn't look too far out. We'll whip that down. Now our problems here is the piece of wood is longer than the tool rest. I weren't going to make it easy for myself. Why would you make it easy on a Saturday morning, eh? Get that driver tap. Get that centre up. Wind up. Lock it all down. Get rid of the old drive there. Turn the speed down. And I'm just going to turn it on without a tool rest for a minute. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. I think we can get a goblet out of this. I'm going to bring the tool rest up now. It's not square. It's sort of oblong, odd shaped, this bit of wood. And there's an old off cut that I had floating around. So I'll bring that down. We've got the camera on to this end. And then I'll zoom the camera out in a minute. So, reading glasses off. Safety glasses on. I'm Get on me up. <coughs> hey? I'm on last week's video. <coughs> it was there just now. Hold on a second. More technical problems. I had Karen on the video. Let's go there. Videos there. Skip back. Karen's on the right thing now. Ah, technology. Morning, Andrew. Morning, Derek. Morning, Robert. Morning, Chris. Morning, all. Morning, anybody I've missed. Morning, Midnight Joker. Morning, morning. I'll stop and look at the chat as I go along. But I'm going to concentrate on this. So, a piece of wood is out of shot. There's another few inches on here. I'll zoom the camera back out. I'll show I zoom the camera out now. Let's do that. Uh, let's get there. And configure video. And bring up the configure video screen. And let's zoom out a little bit. Apply. OK. 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 Lot of OKs. Right, so we're just in shot now. Let's twist her around a little bit. Oh, you're going to feel sick now, aren't you, as I twist you around a little bit. Right, so there's our tool rest. Here's our piece of wood. And now we want a spindle roughing gouge, which is down here somewhere. Well, I thought it was down here somewhere. Here it is. Get it over here. It's stuck in my little thing. No demo, I can't get me spindle roughing gouge out. Demo's cancelled. Ah, 
God. <coughs> what a battle. Right, I'm dealing with cameras and leads and all sorts. So, we've checked it, it would turn three handed. We'll just spin it on. That out for a minute. Handle down low, tool in this side. And we'll just chip away at this and bring it around. Sit there, don't like. Sensible, a piece of wood cut to the length of the tool red. But as you all know, I'm not very sensible. up to the other end get the corners off of that should have cleaned my lathe bed turn that by hand make sure she's all right and we'll work that corner down Stop, red stop. Bring the tool rest back down. We've got a little knot and a split there. Hopefully that's not going to interfere with our stem. We'll find out in a minute. bit of wood's going to be all right. We've got a big flat on one side. I'm sure it'll be all right. A little bit more speed into it as we get it round up. saying too much because I'll get a mouth full of shavings. That's better, I can talk now. 
was using my hands to shield the shaving. Bring this back down this way. and now get a bit more speed into it. So now we're going to whip it up to around about 1500. Still got a bit of a flat. So we'll work back the other way. We'll get rid of this flat at this end now. Travel the tool, the speed, the wood is coming over the cutting edge. Let's try and get a nice continual flow of shavings. Still got a little bit of a flat there. Bring this tool rest up a bit closer. And we'll get around on the end, then we'll move her along. That's better. Red, 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 red. So at this end, let's find a chuck in a minute. Thought about that. About there, okay. So now we need to mount this into a chuck, work out what end's gonna be what. This end can be our goblet end, or oh, it don't much matter. That end can be our goblet end. So we'll just square this face off. Yeah, use a bolt gag. Bring this up a bit further, square the base off and then work out how we're going to put it into a chuck. It's all on the fly. Doing these lives is not like doing a proper club demo. When you do a club demo, you normally prepare the day before. Oop. No bevel support there. A little bit. Uh, you normally prepare the day before as to what you're going to do and diddly diddly do. With this sort of stuff, I make it up as I go along. So that will be there. Now let's find a chuck. Oh, what's 
same with a pair of drawers that are going to grip pair of drawers that are going to grip along the length of this a bit uh, and they're not going to work in there let's find another chuck chuck a con another chuck a con I don't think that set of drawers is going to be ooh that chuck up there might do it I think this will do it look at that right so what I've got here is a Patriot chuck with some long nose jaws and we'll put this in centralize it up and we'll use a steady while we do the end uh, now how wide do we want we want it about there about 45 mil ish what we got there god we're not far out let's take a, a skim off of this Tad more. We're about there, not far off. So let's find. Need to put a shoulder on it. So I just use the skewer here to develop a shoulder. Flatten that off and stop the lathe. We can tool rest up a little bit. Hmm. It's not a crack there. Right. Now I just want to pick this up and flatten this out. These jaws are parallel, so I just want a parallel mount on here. Get rid of that bit. That don't look too sad. Check that. That's close enough. Right, into the jaws we go. Da da da. Let's state this lathe bed, look. Oh, get myself an American Beauty or something. At least they've got stainless steel lathe beds. Now we'll have to clean it at all. So, let's get rid of that spindle roughing gouge. We don't need that. Get rid of that knockout bar. We don't need that. Put the chuck on. Yeah. What's the matter with that? You know what? Ah, I know what's the matter with that. Right. This is uh, not quite to plan. What I've got is this is a chuck that I use around the clubs for demoing. So it's got uh, a thread adapter thread in it. I thought it was an M33 3.5. It's a thread adapter thread. So now to use them jaws, I've got to put them in another chuck. Uh, let's grab this chuck and this piece in. Normally I don't take work pieces out of the chuck till they're finished. But on this occasion for what we're doing here haven't really got the choice the lacquer's stuck the thing to the jaws that's that out of there let's carefully put that over the back 
and then I need to change the drawers over. And somewhere over the rainbow, we got a Allen key. That's there behind me, nice and safe. So I want those long nose jaws into this chuck. Wrong thread indeed, yes. <coughs> Whoopsie. Whoopsie doody. Wrong thread. Where's me little steady? That'll be me next thing. Hunt the steady. Where's the steady gone? Oh, I don't know. Where's the steady gone? Right. Get this off of here. Won't be a second. It's where the old super precisions, I like them, uh, better. But I haven't got a long set of nose jaws. I've got O'Donnell's, which are two narrow for what we're doing um i could have just wound them out wound the next set in because all my jaws for them are on carriers with this i've got to undo 16 screws and then do up eight screws to change the jaws Drop that into there. So this is a demonstration on how to change your chuck jaws live. Now on a proper demo, you'd have all this sorted out beforehand, the day before. Do them up there, that's that one. Put that one into there. The one uh, beauty of this, though, the jaws are not numbered. You don't have to worry what sequence you put them in at. And just drop them in on the Patriot. So that is a good feature. There. Yeah. All fallen asleep yet? Gone off to make a cup of tea, haven't Gone for a tea break. Nearly there. Nearly there. The screws are not going to fall into the shavings, Trevor. I could teach you all something here. Shall I be kind or shan't I? What do you reckon? I'll leave you bending on your knees, crawling through your shavings. Much more fun. Look at that. Now, that's the right thread. Lock that onto there. Get rid of that chuck over there. So, got me steady. What you want to do is have a magnet. There. Drop something metal into the shavings, get your magnet in the shavings, wish it around like a magic wand. Up it comes, stuck to the end of your magnet. There we go. That saves you having to get on your hands and knees. Now I'm going to carefully 
remove this chuck, set of jaws with its screws, drop them on the side there, they'll be there in a year. And now we want to see if what we've done here works. That looks all right. Might even get away without using a steady, who knows. Right, let's turn the speed down. Turn the lathe on, green button. Oh, that's not too sad. Ooh, look at that. We'll bring that to round again. It's a tad out, but we're gonna chop it off here in a bit. Hopefully, well, we might not chop it off there in a bit. You know what happens with goblets? They can become flying goblets. That will be there. Let's pinch that up there. Turn that on there. Drop that tool rest down a bit. Bring that up close. That's how much it's out. There we go. Everything, pencils, me will to live, everything. Right, this is going to be our dead area so we don't hit the chuck. So this will be the base of our goblet down here. So let's just bring this around here. be the top of our goblet right so let's just round that off get a bit of speed in there got a little bit of vibration in the lathe don't know why find out in a minute is it all goes bang all goes peak tom that's round okay so First things first, we need a cup in our goblet and a bit of shape. Uh, let's come down, let's make the cup about there. Somewhere there. So I'm just using my spindle gouge now, just off the tip of the tool. Winding this in. So we'll get the cup on our goblet first.
this over, get rid of a bit of this waste here. Nice and thick so I can still go quite heavy handed. Now we just put a bit of shape into the cup. A little bit of a cove, so backwards and forwards. Something like that. And now we'll get that to blend in. Somewhere there. Where's Mike Walk when you need him? He's our goblet master. I could ask for advice, couldn't I? <coughs> He's either busy chasing sheep today or driving his bus. Roll that over, it's a bit like a bead. Now we'll blend that over into there. Just manipulation of the tool. down a bit more there. Little lift of the hand as I go, twist the wrist over and she's going to be somewhere around there. I think. Let's have a look. Yeah, somewhere we've got a line here that's not too good. We've got to blend that a bit more. It should just flow. Somewhere around there, I think. Something like that. Something like that. Get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. Now we're going to come into the end. Clean the end up and hollow this out. They're going do it without a steady. Should be able to, but if not, I'll stick a steady on. We are over the, off the chuck a little bit. We'll see if we can do it carefully. 
carefully here. Carefully. So first I want to get the gas up the right way. No, I think that's going to need a steady. There's a bit of vibration there as I'm just cutting along. So we just pop the steady into here just for a second. The steadier have to go, of course. Can't have a steady forever. Let's get this around here. Get this around here. That should just fit through there. You know what? I haven't used this steady on this lathe. It was set up for me other lathe. Let's see if we've got to adjust the height. Da da da. Because it's going to have a long stem. Long, thin stem goblet with captive rings is the plan. Not saying the plan's going to work, but that's the plan. Right, let's get that underneath there. See if I can find that. The plan is to have a long stem goblet in one piece with a captive ring and a bit of colour. What actually happens might be completely different. Anybody just coming along? Yeah. Uh, we're doing a goblet and what I was saying in the beginning of this, I haven't turned a goblet for about six years. And I have never done a captive ring. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever. It's not like that up there. Bit of support round the top. Bit of that down there. Bit of that down there. Bit of that down there. Turn the speed down. Turn the lathe on. Turn the speed up. They're all turning, that's supported. Now we see if we can hollow this out. Right. I need to get rid of the towel stop and get round the end. Now on this lathe, you can't see this, can you? No, you can't. Oh, I'm tapping it just here where me gouge is. Uh, they have a little tool tray that you put on. So I bolted that on thinking, that's a good idea. Keep all my centers in there. Excellent. After using it for a few weeks now, that's a pain. Because when I'm standing here, it's stopping my leg getting into the lathe. So it needs to come out. I think there's screw holes and needs to be mounted on the opposite side of the lathe. We definitely haven't got an end on camera, have we? We haven't got a real end on camera. Thanks very much, Pete. Not do not do a captive <laughs> ring. They're just silly. I agree. Let's try it. Oh, that ain't got any camera. We ain't got we're not using captive ring tools, bugger that. No. No 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 no. We're gonna do it. Let's just twist that camera around there a little bit. See if you can get a view. That's the end. That's what I can see. So the plate has got to go, that's in the way. It's not gonna go now, right this minute this remote box up here so I can get it 
Uh, let me just get in here. To rest a little bit higher. A little bit more speed. I just want to drill this centre. And start honouring this goblet. No, I can't use it like bulk gouge. I thought I could use it like bulk gouge. That don't work. Let's just drill and work backwards. My arms are restricted now by the shelf and everything else that wants to get in the way. So what you can't see off a camera is... Hold on. I'll show you what I'm dealing with. Let's come to... That's our end camera. So, if I turn this around... Here. I'm standing here like this. Ooh, you can't really see. I'm standing here like this. And my elbow's against the shelf as I'm trying to go in there. So I'm trying to make the best of a bad job, really. I've got to, uh, where's that? I've got to move the lathe. Not now, not right now. But at some point, the lathe has got to move. I've got an air compressor at my feet that's plugged in. Tried to move it out of the way, everything went catapulting across the floor just, I just need a little air compressor down there for when we need it I just want to create a bit of space so I can get to the end of this let's get rid of that trouble with a camera rig can you swing that thing off? Huh? can you swing the end off? what the end? end of the light yeah I can but I ain't going to do anything oh. Well, I don't think so. Let's try that. No, that ain't going to do anything. Karen's giving me advice. I shouldn't listen. Right, so now I can sort of get here. Uh, and all of this goblet, you've got some sort of shot there. Drop that down. Do that. Do that. spindle gas like a drill and then I'm just going to come in here gently could have a thick walled thin stem goblet whose idea was this that's what I removed the meat first out the middle and what I'm probably gonna have to do is use a little hollowing tool I've created myself an undercut at the bottom. If I'd had all cameras working, I could have had a camera shining right into the goblet. But 
Adam. Does that would work? Anybody just join in this morning? Just has to be we're trying to get a couple of screen camps to work. And it wouldn't. So we're running on two cameras rather than four. And an iPhone. So I'm just carefully feeding the gouge out now. Hold on, let me move my picture over so I can see what you see. Can you see what I see? Like Christmas, eh? So what I'm doing is I'm just using the inner wing of the gouge. Is that frozen? Hey? Well, we're spinning here. Mine is frozen, yeah. Well, so, what I'm doing is I'm using the inner, inner wing of the tool just to bring this wood away here, just gently as I come back to mimic the outside shape. about there. Here's me little catastrophe on the end. Let's tidy that up. And now we'll work on the next bit. check that it's not bad to there so now we do the next bit Couldn't you see the goblet there? That was, it's all right to there. We're down to about here where we'll be undercutting in a minute. And I want to go about as deep as that. So about halfway. So into the middle. Middle for diddle. Fill that out.
are we doing there? So it's about there. Drill to about there, which is about there. So I'm about here. Bit more. Keep checking. Rest up a little bit, mind the wings of the goblet or the lip, rather. Just want to get into there. See if I can get there. Somewhere there. Should be getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. Right, so now what I want to do is just refine the inner shape to match the outer shape. Where's that bit there? Yeah, I'm on it. Right, so I just need to get in there and refine the inner shape. So I'm just going to try a little hollowing tool so I can get an undercut. Where's my little hollowing tool gone? Put my Allen key somewhere safe. We're getting there people, we're getting there so. The little mini olivine tool. Is the camera frozen again? Or are we just be lying time? Just feeding this little hooked hollowing tool in to get me undercut. That's about there. And I just got to go a little bit deeper, deeper and deeper. Little rim line there. We'll get feed that out. I've got glasses on. Spindle gouge in my hands. Definitely not known for me spindle turn, yes, but uh, not known for any bit really. Just working this tool backwards and forwards. That's better, there's me undercut. And now I want to get just a bit deeper into there. About there, let's put a bit of that away. Mm -hmm. 
it's all rest out of the way so I'm full. That's it. That's it. Ooh, lovely. Right, put me tool rest back. Get in there. Yeah, let's try it. Sort this out a little bit in here. more cuts don't want to come through the side but in there that's it that's better that's more like it right so now he says now let's sand our goblet up just quickly we won't go too mad with the sanding I've got to find a bit of 400 only joking 40 I meant a bit of 40 grit Gonna texture it. We've got a pile of sandpaper up there. Why can't you ever find the bit you want when you're doing this? Move that tool rest out of my way. Give this quick sand up. I want what I really really want. I wanna, I wanna. all right so that's the top of our goblet so now we're gonna if i can get it back round get me towel stock back round i use me uh swing away to get rid of me uh towel stock because that was in me way Everything's in my way here. I need to rejig the workshop. Put it all out. Put it back together again. Normal sort of stuff. So, move that down. 
move this down. We can come back over it, can't we, really? Hang on. Will it work? Who knows? We'll lose this completely in a minute, I think. This dry metal wall. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Bring that up here. Bring the tool rest up. And now, you're nearly ready. Ever ready? Bring that up. Live centre back in. Would I put that somewhere safe there? Now, this is a bit small for a tennis ball. So, what we'll use is a bit of anti friction mat. Bit of anti friction mat here. Slide that into there. It might be a bit too much anti friction mat. Now I'm on the hunt for a pair of scissors. Who's got me scissors? Or sharp knife or something. Oh no, I'll just tear it. That'll do. Right. So we get that into there. Bring that up into there. Lock that down there. Give that little tweak up. Not too much. That's got it, I think. Find out in a minute, snap. Oh, look at that. That looks like it's moved. Oh, because we were in the steady, weren't we? Hmm, okay. Okay, okay. Think on your feet. Let's get rid of that steady. We can't do too much about that cup. Might be able to just fine tune it a little bit. Let's get rid of the steady. The steady's pushed the wood out. Nothing to do with the turner. Get rid of that. Because we're between centres again now, it's not the end of the world. Um, we have, we will have to get gentle. Have to get gentle. I'll put that up there so I can't find that later. Move this into here. I'm just going to see if we can trim the outside of that cup up a little bit. Bit of speed. Pair of safety glasses. Uh, just going to have to blend this in. some of this sorry ah overhead how's that did I forget just keep reminding me So I'm just using the spindle gouge here to take out some of this depth, thickness rather, depth, thickness. And we just come back the other way. Yeah, 
come over here. Yes, round this over. Into there. Twisting myself around just as I take this down here. Let's have a look at that, see what it looks like. I can't see a thing. I think the glass uh glass is all dusted up. Yeah, right. so that's gonna be somewhere there, right? Let's remove a bit of meat now. Thanks Dave, kind of you, thank you. So we're just going to remove a bit of meat now. Red, 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 stop, stop, stop. Remember we've got a little knot with a split in it there. Let's hope that's not going to cause us a problem. Faster, faster, let's go faster. You could hear a pin drop, couldn't you? It's so quiet. Shh.
Somewhere there. Somewhere there, over the rainbow. Let's check that little splitty knot. Oh, that's gone. That's handy. Handy, Harry. Alright, so we're going to have a base coming in here on our pencil line. Let's move this down. So our base is going to come in here. Where do I put that then? I'll put it over there then. Then what? somewhere around there okay that's nice and thin isn't it don't you think thin enough or you want it thinner uh, here somewhere over the rainbow can't see a thing aha that's what I was looking for Little parting tool. So, we want to put in... Rolling ourselves a bead. Lost me glasses. Alright. That 
one a go in there. Should be captive rings, shouldn't it? Let's go for two. Similar. I really haven't got a clue what I'm doing over here. Hmm. That one's going to be thinner than that one. Oh. Didn't want that to happen. I want to get down there a bit. Back of the bevel, idiot. The bevel rub. And there. They're gonna go in there, right? So now, let's get rid of a bit of this. me spindle wrapping gouge on the side of the bead. Now just rub the back of the bevel and start creating a bit of a undercut into there. This is probably not the right way to do this. But I think I can do it like this. So I'm going to have a go. As long as I get my bevel support. Should be able to just get in there and then start going in that way with the tip. And that way with the tip. And then take a little bit more out of there. And then do the same that side. A little bit more out of there. Get underneath there. And get underneath there. And then 
back underneath there. I'm trying to shape the underside of the bevel and in a minute I'll hook in there. But I've got to finish the other end first. But while it's thick, I'm just messing around with this bit. She's going along and now we're going to start on this one. Yeah, and get rid of some of that. the bevel into there is my thinking while this is fixed so there's a bit of rigidity to it and we'll get most of the way there and then we'll thin this down and get it into our thin stem I don't want to get this too thin but I want to get it thin enough so I will be able to get through without too many problems once the stem's thin The easy way would be go and get a captive ring tool off the shelf. the bevel, find the chuck, a bit tight in there, get that looking like a ring, off the side of the gouge. They're going to be like rings. Uh, can we get in there? fair way towards it and it's just not looking very ringy tied there huh? 
can I zoom in? Hold on. Camera. Bigger. Camera. Zoom. Apply. How's that? So what we've done, what I'm doing, while the stem's still thick, is I'm just creating the shape of this ring with the wing of my spindle gouge. Obviously I've gone wrong a couple of times because I cut out little catches, nothing major. And we just bring that underneath there. There and this one. There, bring that around. I'm just using the ring of the tool. To make it round, so I want to make it as round as possible before I start on the stem, so they look like rings when they're floated around in a minute. Yes, like right that off the wing of the tool. Just real gentle touch. There. Something like that. Right. So now, wrong pull. I want to start taking some bulk out of this. Hold on, let's zoom back out a bit. you can see. So, Mr. Walt saying use the skew. I don't use skews. There's a bit of flex in there. So let's get the tool rest in there. Got to be careful of that chuck. Bring this up a bit. Can I get in there like that? Got to be fairly close. I don't want to hit me cup. I don't want to hit me what's going to be me base. So now, Mister Walt is saying, use your skew, use your skew. Well, I don't use skews. Use your skew, use your skew. Goodbye, Mike. <laughs> Thanks for your assistance. So I don't use skews as a rule. I'll leave that to Steve Jones.
We were going to use the skewer anyway to go thin. We're never going to get it with the spindle wrapping gouge. So we were always going to use the skew. And that's how I intend to part my bead or my captive ring with the tip of the skew. Now we're getting a little catchy bit there. Might be a bit blunt, let's just sharpen that. Oh, because I don't use it. Coffee's cold. Sharper one, bigger one. No. Right. We're just going to put an edge on the skew. I'll we'll put my table back on my pro edge because I only really use long grinds so there tables on nearly one more turn that's it on screw jigs in turn it on that's a better edge Right, so, back on. Up to about 1500. Get my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing off. Now you're not going to be able to see too much here because what I've done I'm just cupping my hand over the skew got a bit of a knot there yeah, let's get rid of that let's try that way see if you can see what's going on how's that We just keep moving along. What I'm going to do, on, let's get a bit more meat out of it if we can. Drop that tool rest down a bit. My tool rest won't go in far enough into here. Can't get it that close. Without hitting the cup. I don't want to hit the cup. There. Yeah. Drop that tool rest down. I want to get rid of some of this bolt because we're going to be here forever. And the quickest way for me to get rid of bolt is this. You see that bounce in there, it's come the other way. I'm 
They've got no pressure on the cutting edge. Oh, I know. I have got a smaller tool rest that I can get in there with. I have, I have, I have. I have, I have, I have. Where did I put it? A small tool rest. Where did I put it? Uh, uh, uh. Right. I've got a short tool rest. So, what I want to do is get in here with the short tool rest and try and speed this process up. Yeah. Help me skew. Yeah. Got me lathe on. Yeah. Tool rest is up. And now I just come in. Peel a bit of that off. See what I'm doing of. And spindle gad. Just take that off. Somewhere around there. And now I'll just take this down here, just lay the skew on. I don't want it vibrating as I go. Keep putting my tools down, I'll just lay them where I can get them. I want that. 
want that I just want to come back in here just gently Well out. Bring this back to the sandpaper into there. Somewhere there. Right. Now, we'll get this into here. Put my tools where I can find them. And now we'll just take this down a little bit, or we'll try. Don't hit the wood with the tool rest. It might snap. Whoa, bang. That weren't good. Let's check that. Alright, that's alright. Don't panic! Now you can't see too much here because I find it easier to work towards the headstock because I'm right handed with a skew. Let's try the other way. I'm just brushing this along Trying to support this with my fingers as I go. Somewhere there, and then we'll move it along. And we'll try and remove some of this meat.
Come down a bit. Down a bit, stop fire. And now we do the next bit. Just have to relax the pressure in your arm as you go. Now let's go whip around a bit here. So we just got to feed really gently. Somewhere there. Down a bit further. Oh, we're running along here. At a great rate of knots. Like joining up the dots. Now bring that tool rest back a bit. See in the stages, because I'm too thick just here. And we've got to try and get this in here now and just level this out. Better. Now we come over the top. Back the other way. You what? Someone's asking for a different view. Different view, we could try. You might have to say, he's new on, I think you might have to say, we can try a view like that for a minute. Problem is, we, we're lacking in cameras today, so we're just doing our best with what we've got. So we sand this in here. Is that one? Do 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 do. Into there. Now we're at the crucial bit where it's right in the middle. Go that way.
Now back this way. Just lay the bevel on, then lift the handle. Little squeeze of the hand. Somewhere there. Mm hmm. Eh? Hey? Let's go back overhead. Right, so, bit of this one. Lay the bevel on, raise your handle, and just slide the tool up the rest. There's no real pressure on the tool. A bit of pressure on your back of your hand against the wood. Now I'll come back that way. Somewhere there. Stop that. Move tool rest. Oh, we're getting down to these rings. I wonder what's going to happen with them. We'll find out in a minute. Right. And obviously, with uh, if you wanted to, you can just take this a bit thinner. This takes longer. Yeah, as gentle as you go. Making sure there's no bumps there. All right. Bring this in now. Now I don't know when you want to try and take out that captive ring. Is the honest answer. I don't know. It'd be a good idea to see if we can get in there with a tip now. bit of meat on the bone. Ooh. Might be a tad eye. This is where it could all go wrong. from the other side we don't want to do that then back from that side bit of burn there. Got way to go there. I might have to uh, see what I'm round that in a bit more. Give us a bit more. Keeping that, trying to keep it ring shaped. Let's 
as we get underneath there. It's ring shaped. And we're just going with the tip again. Lift it in. There's one. She's ready to go. We can sand her out in a minute. Now, I wonder if that other one's too close. Find out in a second. I'm just going in with a tip, like a V cut, and lifting as I go. Now, this side might be a bit more pragmatical, a bit near the chuck. Back around there. And we use the spindle gouge wing just to keep her round. Same this side. Real light shaving, just so I can, so she's round. And now I'm just gonna just come in there with me V cut again, and then round here with me V cut if I can get up. Doing this while well, we've got a bit of meat on the bone. There. Get that round again. Get that round in there. Just using the wing to create the round, drag it round. There. Now, hopefully, this one should be nearly there. There we go. That's that one. So, we got two captive rings are moving. We just get in there. It's a bit awkward where I put these against this chuck, to be fair. Right, so now we get this stem down and then we'll be able to move our rings out of the way. Getting a bit jabby. This way.
from there. Quick sand of that one. we get to this bit Just like pressure on the fingertips supporting the wood, otherwise you burn your fingers. moving that ring around a bit normally you get a bit of sandpaper underneath um, and well we are where we are so let's just get in there best I can I want to get rid of this bolt so I can get the rings out of the way try and do it that way up move out my way now there's one moving out my way I want to get this one out my way and then we just finish the stem and the base and your demo will be over so a few more minutes people sorry we're a little overrun again nothing unusual for me that one so there's our captive rings oh I've got a bit of a problem in there let's get rid of that didn't part it off properly if we can get it now this might be a bit more of a problem And then we can sand them up. Right, let's get this bit done into a base and then we're out of here.
secret is not to have any pressure pushing forward. That right. Now we start taking the bulk away for our little base. Spindle gouge is gone. Someone's nicked me spindle gouge. Here we go. Oh, that's a parting tool. That's not a spindle gouge. Where's my spindle gouge gone? Oh, right under my nose, look. that through our fingers somewhere there I would think put that down there stop that you could glue them up with a bit of masking tape out your way Ah, uh, cable tie, good idea. Hold on. Bread, 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 bread. That's what happens when you don't tape them up. I would assume. There's a bit of masking tape here. There's another roll of masking tape somewhere. This stuff's horrible. I've got a roll of masking tape here that I think is past its sell-by date. Because it won't peel off, so it needs to go in the bin. Cool, that's at it. That's going on the fire. Oh, I found one. Right, quick bit of masking tape. It's just masking tape that up there out of the way. Yeah. Put decorations in me stem look. That wasn't the plan to have them decorations. Don't rush. I'm trying to rush now.
Bit of sand in. There, red stop. Just tidy that bit up there. It's all rest is a tad eye. about there. Mind the chuck, mind the chuck. Stop the lathe, stop the lathe. In there, there, down there. Slim parting tool. Take that out of there. Now we gotta be very, very careful. Just support that there. There. Now normally what you would do is put a bit of sandpaper around the stem while it's spinning. And then you can sand the inside out of your captive rings. Where are we going? Back there. So, one tool, finishing goblet with captive rings. There was no paint, because it took longer than I thought. People kept asking about barley, Trish. Do you want to try that uh, And they're the first ever captive rings that I've done. So, And they're my last, to be fair. Not my idea of a project, really. Uh, we could have carried on going and got this stem down with that technique, but just very gentle and slowly and got the stem down a little bit more. But hey, -o, there's your captive ring goblet for this Saturday with Overrun as per normal. But hey, -o, that's life, isn't it? So, people, I hope you've enjoyed your morning. Uh, now, this will be my last demonstration for 2020. Uh, I've done every Saturday since we started in March. Uh, I hope you've all enjoyed it. I hope it's inspired you to uh, try things new and have a go. Uh, I've never done a captive ring before, so we had a go at that. Um, it's been a lot of fun uh, along the way. We've had some laughs, but I need a couple of weeks off to sort this out. Now, next year, when I come back, uh, I'll probably be changing the format uh, and going to IRD's interactive remote demonstrations. Uh, I've got to try and pay for me broadband somehow or other. Uh, and I'm planning on doing some... Uh, 
tuition, sort of remote tuition as well. So, I'd like to thank you all for your support. Uh, thank you for watching on a Saturday morning. I hope you have enjoyed yourselves. Uh, I hope you all have a fantastic Christmas uh, and a happy new year. But next weekend, I'm into the realms of I've got to make some snowmen for the Christmas tables, uh, which I haven't had a chance to stand at a lathe, really. I sort of here on a Saturday morning, and other than that, it's been working. So I hope you're all okay, all okay. Uh, are we still streaming, or has everybody disappeared? Oh, yeah, no, we're still there. I couldn't see the picture. So thank you all for turning up. Uh, thank you for all your support. It means a lot. And we will be... We could make the stem a bit thinner, but I'm not worried about it. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed yourselves. The chat seems to have stopped. Uh, hold on. Let's see if I can get that back. I can't see if anybody's saying anything. The chat seems to have finished. So you've either all gone, got bored, or uh, no, I don't know. Uh, oh, someone's back. A bit of it's back. There it comes. I don't know what's happened there. Great demo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bruce. Kind of you. Uh... Saying just when you peek, a lot of we our chat had uh frozen, so we we're only just seeing it. Oh, thank you very much, Miss Granny. Thank you, Pat Carroll. Thank you very much. Um, Ellen Bailey's a granny, <laughs> so she's now no longer Lady H, she's Lady Granny. We had no chat coming through, so uh, I'm, suddenly we got piles of chat all flying through at once. I don't know what had happened. Um, I assume you all uh, have uh, understood that this was the last Saturday live. I've got to get on with Christmas. We have put a Christmas tree up indoors when we bought it about four weeks ago. There's not a decoration in sight. So we've got to go and do those sort of things. Uh, the shop will start, the web should start to slow down now. We're into the last phases to build up to Christmas. Last week was mental. Um, so we are now gearing up to sort of try and get our home into some sort of order. Obviously for everybody, Christmas is going to be different. Uh, we normally have a house full. Uh, and there'll be the three of us. Uh, so, the chat stopped again. So, I can't see what's going on. Oh, no, it's good. So, I hope you've all enjoyed yourselves. I hope it's been a fantastic year. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I look forward to seeing you some of you next year. Um, and there'll be more planning and more like a proper demo where I spend half a day before and doing the prep work and all that sort of stuff rather than off the cuff, cross your fingers and see what happens. Um, so, thank you all. I hope you've enjoyed your morning. Sorry we've stayed late. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for your support. Uh, and I look forward to chatting with you and seeing you online and at clubs when clubs get back together. Uh, all have a lovely Christmas. Happy New Year. I'm sure a lot of us will talk. See you later. Goodbye.